Hey guys, welcome back to the weekly vlog. My name is Mike and this is my chance to take you along with me as we take a look at a week on the ranch. And it's a pretty busy week. Uh, not only is my birthday fall in this week, which maybe I'll get a little bit of time off, we're also preg checking and we just got that done today. That will be Wednesday's video. I hope you get a chance to watch it. If you haven't, go back, check that out. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we ended up with 13 cows that weren't pregnant, so they will be removed from the herd. Uh, the other ones, there's about a hundred left that will be calving in the spring, hopefully, as long as the feed holds out and everything else uh, just uh, kind of stays status quo. We don't have anything crazy happen. Speaking of which, um, we are going to be visiting with Mackenzie, my oldest daughter here, in just a few minutes. Um, her calf, Bambi, who is, uh, for lack of better words, a, a pet calf, uh, Bambi last year sloughed her calf really early in calving season, which basically means that she aborted her calf. She had the calf, but she had it a little bit early and it, it didn't live. So this year we preg checked Brandy, or we preg checked Bambi, and uh, we're gonna let Mackenzie know how exactly uh, that went and hopefully uh, make one little girl's uh, day. Anyway, that's our that's our plan. Also this week, uh, we're gonna be moving along uh, as we take a look at my birthday, which is on Wednesday. And uh, we are also gonna be doing something a little bit different because this week is all about Murphy's Law. I tend to find out that uh, things happen here on the ranch without uh, rhyme or reason. And Murphy's Law basically states that if something can go wrong, it will go wrong. Uh, while that's maybe not always the rule here on the ranch, there's always something to be done. So each day this week, I'm hoping to be able to take you through what we're doing on the ranch, whether they're little tiny projects or big projects. And usually uh, they have to, they're, they're rather unexpected. So um, we are uh, gonna take a day each week, uh, or uh, some time each day of this week uh, to take you through those little tiny projects that uh, sometimes we don't really anticipate having to do. But I've heard Mackenzie just got home, so we're gonna swing inside. We're gonna let her know the good news about uh, Bambi, and uh, then I'll come back and meet you on Tuesday, and we'll get rolling. Hi, I'm Mackenzie, and welcome to the weekly vlog. Okay, Mackenzie, <clears throat> I'm gonna squeeze in here with you. How are you? I'm good. You just got home from school? Yes. You know we preg checked today? Yes. What is your question for the day? Is Bambi pregnant? <laughs> Who's Bambi? My pet cow. Your pet cow. Is she pregnant? I don't know if she's pregnant or not. What do you think? <laughs> yes. You're right. She is pregnant. With a girl or a boy? We don't know. Again? Again, but it's going to be a big surprise. Like last year. Yeah. Are you happy she's pregnant? Yes. yes she's and what do you hope she has? A little heifer. A little cute heifer that's orange. <laughs> <laughs> orange? No, not orange. Not orange. The, Purple? No, the red. red no. Oh, the, like a red one? Yeah, the red one, and with the white face markings like Bambi. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> so cool. if she hooked up with the red bull, that may happen. Hopefully. When, when will we know? Uh, when she has her cat. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. In April, we'll find out. So stick around. April's her birthday month. Yeah, it's everybody's birthday month. It's all the calves' birthday months. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Kenzie. So we preg checked the cows yesterday, and now it's time to kind of go and take a look and see what we're left with and what, uh, what kind of damage has been done. Uh, we've got a few small problems, I think, that we're gonna end up fixing over the week, uh, and I'll be able to bring you along with me for those. Um, basically, you saw during, um, well, okay, I gotta think backwards here. So you saw during the preg checking video um, that we had 13 cows that showed up as not pregnant. Those 13 cows are actually located right here in this corral. Um, they've got water, they've got food in here, but really this corral isn't set up for 13 cows. Um, some of these cows are going to be going to auction. Some are actually going to be going into jerky. 
and we've got to be able to keep them until we can get uh, what we need to get done with them. So they're going to stay in here, but one of the problems that we have is that they have a small water tank for all 13 of them. And I filled up this water tank uh, earlier this morning, and I'm kind of guessing it might be, it might not be, uh, it might be empty already. So we're going to go take a look at their water tank and, uh, and see what we can do to... Uh, Maybe make it a little bit more economical, both for them and for us. So I like the idea of keeping a water tank in the corrals, just in case you do have to hold a cow in here overnight or even longer. Blonde cows actually been in here most of the summer. But the problem is that you, you, know, you have to be able to, to have enough water for the amount of cows. And like I said, we just have too many cows in here right now. So this water tank, even though I filled it up, it's well, over, uh, well under half already. So I think what I'm going to do is actually switch this out with a larger tank. And uh, that way we'll be able to uh, not have to fill it up three, four times a day like we're, like we're having to right now. Luckily, I've got a lot of tanks, so this is a relatively easy project. But while we're in here, I wanted to get you guys an update on another thing that you saw in the, uh, in the prey checking video. And that was uh, Blonde Cow. Uh, we had the vet take a look at her. And I've had some questions about her eyesight here for a little while. She's getting older. Um, and while we hate to see Blonde Cow go, it's, a, it's an inevitable thing that's going to happen at some point. So we had the vet take a look at her eyes. Um, she's been having trouble getting around. She's been bumping into things. And, of course, the vet agreed with us that she's obviously having eye issues. Turns out she has cat, bovine cataracts, which are cow cataracts, and uh, there's not really a whole lot that we can do for her. Um, she's got some inflammation in her eyes from them, and uh, uh. since we maybe didn't get a good chance to look at it during the video, uh. I thought I'd give you guys a little bit closer look here, uh. um, since she's just hanging out and laying down. You can see her, she's looking around. She knows we're here, obviously, um, but we're probably pretty blurry to her. Hey, shush. Blonde cow is actually the oldest cow on the ranch. She's over 15 years old. Uh, she's had 13 calves. This is Showtime, her newest and her last calf that she's gonna be allowed to have on the ranch. She's not pregnant, but she is gonna stay uh, until we figure out what exactly we wanna do with her. We've had a few suggestions um, from the vet and from other folks what we need to do, but um, we definitely, uh, we're gonna figure that out and uh, keep you guys updated on what happens with blonde cow. She's looking a little thin. We're obviously going to have to give her some grain and uh, try to get her boosted back up a little bit here. But uh, she's she's just getting older, and that's kind of the kind of the curse and the way things work around here is that uh, everything on the ranch eventually has to go, and that's just the circle of life, including you know you and I at some point. So we are going to work on this water tank here really quick. So I've kept this water tank in here just because it is a narrow water tank. It's kind of out of the way uh, most of the time. So it can be up against a fence. We don't have to worry about it. But the bigger one we're going to bring in is, hope, if I can get it out, is hopefully a circle tank. And that will obviously take up a whole bunch more room in here. So, uh, But give or take, right? <laughs> I don't want any cows messing with me while I'm uh, trying to do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and close some gates and open up this gate so I can move the new one, the new tank in here pretty easily.
All right, so here's our new tank. A little bit of water and ice in it. Hopefully I can get it out of here. All right, so it's got a little bit of water, some ice in it, um, but I did pull the plug so I can spin this around, hopefully get the water to drain out. That'll make it a little lighter. This is exactly why we store tanks the other way around, upside down, so that they don't collect water, so when you do need a tank, they're a lot easier to move. Um, this water that's in here is basically just snow melt, ice, other stuff that's just kind of, you know, run off the roof, whatever, um, but it's collected in this tank and, and now is causing us problems. So um, I've gotten it drained down a little bit. It's not exactly empty, um, that's for sure, but I'm gonna try to get this ice out of here next, see if that lightens it up a little bit so we can kind of flip it up and get it out of here. Broken. Okay, I got all the ice out of it. This is a perfect example of Murphy's Law. Really, this project should take about five minutes. Grab a tank, put it over there, be done. Of course, it turns into something a little bit more. And now the cows are mad they don't have water. So I'm gonna work on getting the rest of this water out of here. But now you can see it's a lot lighter. Pick it up and get it up and out of the way without the ice and everything else in it. I can put the plug back in. There we go. We got our tank, now we'll just roll it into place. I am soaking wet. We're almost there. All right, so this isn't really level at all, <laughs> but It's not horrible. All right, we'll let that fill up. Come back and get some cows in here. That's good enough. Uh, it's got enough weight in the tank now, enough water in the tank that uh, we can go ahead and let some cows in. So let's open up, let's close this gate. Before we open gates, we close gates. Let's close this gate. You can hear the calves over there having a fit. They were actually weaned yesterday as well, the same day 
that we preg check, we wean all the calves. We have to sort them anyway, so calves are not too happy. Their moms are all separated from them. I think it's like sending the, the kid off to college. I don't know who's more upset, the kid or, or the mom. So right now it seems to be the kids. All right, we've got this open. Guys, you want some water? Water? I don't know. So there you have it. Pretty easy project. <laughs> we'll call it easy. Just fill up a water tank, move a water tank, fill it up, and you're done. Nothing's ever that easy. Alrighty, guys, I will uh, see you tomorrow. And oh, I want to let you know before I go, this weekend on Sunday is our live stream. That happens on the Beyond the Ranch channel at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. So I hope you can join us uh, Sunday evening, 6 p.m. on Beyond the Ranch. So hopefully we can see you there and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. It is Wednesday and today is my birthday. So thank you very much to everybody who has sent those happy birthday wishes already. Um, I've gotten them on Facebook, Instagram, Facebook, all those cool places. Uh, so <laughs> keeping with, with this week's theme that uh, we never really know what's gonna happen around here on the ranch. Uh, even though it's my birthday, I've got to go out and move some cows. We have some naughty cows that are not really being all that naughty. They actually, well, if you remember, on Monday we preg checked, and along with preg checking, we also weaned the calves, which means we took the calves away from their moms, and we're getting them off of mom's milk, we're getting them on feed. So, not everybody agrees with that decision, and a few cows have decided to go where they're not supposed to go, and that is in a hay field that's closer to their calves. There's a few, a little bit of a buffer zone in between them and their calves. Well, they decided to go where they weren't supposed to go. So we are going to head up that way and uh, see what we got to do to get them moved back out. And then what we also have to do is figure out how they got in there in the first place. So probably going to be fixing some fence and uh, moving some cows. That's the plan. And then later birthday party, I guess. I'm not sure. So <laughs> stick with me and uh, we're going to head out and find those delinquent cows. another problem <laughs> and that's that one of our open cows that we were working with yesterday apparently figured out how to get herself loose so we're gonna get her swapped around and then we'll go deal with these other ones she's right in there she's not supposed to be in there she's supposed to be in with the cows in that new water tank that we gave you guys that you don't want actually they're probably using it but we have a bad cow. We're just gonna grab her really quick and just move her back up. Shouldn't be a problem. somewhat convinced that cows know when they're in trouble. In fact, hopefully the ones that we're going back to deal with in the hay field back there know they're in trouble and move their butts out. And then, you know, it'd be even nicer is if they showed us where they came through. That'd be pretty handy too. 
So we have a video coming out uh, this afternoon. I've got to put a few finishing touches on it, but it is all about the uh, uh, preg checking the cows. And I hope you guys liked it or like it. So while the cows did get preg checked, the calves, of course, got weaned. And I think that's what led us into this problem. So we're gonna head up here through the lot and find those cows that are in the wrong place at the wrong time. By the way, her being out, another example, where it's always something. Let me give you a frame of reference. Um, these cows are good. This is where they're supposed to be. The calves are just on the other side of that fence. We'll sneak in a little closer and look at them. But the cows that are out there beyond that fence, they're not supposed to be in there. But what they're doing is they're coming into this field and into this hay field and trying to get to their calves. And then they're realizing there's food in there, which, because we didn't graze it off yet, um, and we didn't hay it this year. So they're seeing that there's food in there. So now they're like, oh, this is great. Now we bonus, right? Uh, maybe we don't care about the calves as much as we thought we did. So the calves are right over here. Let's go uh, sneak a peek at them. Hey, number two. How are you? Right back there, that's all the calves getting weaned, just hanging out, eating food, drinking water, doing their thing. Bad cows over the fence here. We're gonna go try to push them out of here and then try to figure out where they're coming in. This is the gate in and out of that hay field. Unfortunately, we have cows right here who are watching what we're doing. So we're gonna close this gate behind us, move those cows that we don't want in the hay field down into this corner, open up the gate and kick them out, hopefully. I can already see one cow. I don't know if you can see her, but she's poking her head up right about there. She sees us. She knows we're up to something. She knows it's probably not good. We're just gonna drive right by her like we don't even care um, because what we usually try to do in this kind of situation is get the farthest away cow first and then pick up the rest of them as we come along. A little bouncy out here. Come on. Come on, let's go.
get the gate open? And we invite these guys to leave politely. Go, get. Stay out. Maybe. I hear you. Alrighty, now with everybody out of where we don't want them, um, including the one that went up over the hill, she apparently got lovesick or something and decided to come back and join everybody else. Uh, we're actually going to go and check this run of fence. Now, this is really the only place that they could have got in. Uh, this isn't the best fence in the world. In fact, it could probably use some replacing. Yes, I hear you. Um, but it's the only place I can really think that they would be getting into this hay field. Um, this fence that runs back on this side of it, actually pretty good. So there's probably a spot back here where either they broke the fence or they're stepping over it or something's happening. So really quick drive down the fence line. We'll take a look. We'll get it fixed up. So you can see where there's places where they're pushing down on the top wire, they're reaching over, they're eating. Uh, I think what they do is they didn't figure out, oh wow, I can step over this now because I pushed it down so far. Um, there's also another couple spots where they've broken clips and that's what I'm really going to be looking at fixing right now. So this is one of those spots where we have a broken clip, we have loose wires, um, and what they're able to do is just push this straight down and just step right over it. The barbed wire really doesn't hurt the cows at all. Um, and sometimes I even wonder if it's that much of a uh, deterrent. So I'm going to put a couple clips on this really quick, and then uh, this should be good to go. It's a pretty simple fix, and I grabbed some of these because I kind of had an idea of what was going on. Um, these are just T-post clips. Um, these just go right on. Whoops. And around. And then I just take a screwdriver, twist it around. So that'll hold that piece from getting pushed down. What a great way to spend your birthday, huh? There we go, all that fence has uh, been fixed, hopefully, but once the cows kind of figure out they know how to get in there, it wouldn't surprise me if they get in there again. But uh, a new fence might be in order, or at least uh, a new uh, top couple strands on that fence probably wouldn't be a bad idea. That uh, pretty much does it for uh, today. Uh, it is my birthday, like I said, so I've got uh, some birthday plans with the kids. I think we're gonna go out to dinner. I'm sure we got a few presents to open and that kind of good stuff. Um, thank you again for all the happy birthdays and, and well wishes uh, over Facebook, Instagram, uh, and wherever else, the email, YouTube, whatever. Oh, and I have stuff to finish the video too. <laughs> I gotta get that done and ready to come out uh, this afternoon all about uh, prank checking. So I hope that you guys uh, really do enjoy it. We'll be back tomorrow where we continue as uh, we see, you know, what else can go wrong on the ranch. Stick around. guys welcome back to uh, Thursday Thursday yeah Thursday here on the ranch uh, we're continuing on uh, whatever can happen will happen and uh, this morning or this 
early morning, almost afternoon. Uh, we are getting ready to uh, head out and fix a problem, another water problem, actually. Uh, this time, though, with our new calves, uh, I think the moms have been kept out of the hay field that uh, we pushed them out of yesterday, but uh, now we've got a, a calf problem as they kind of went and destroyed a water tank, and we're going to have to go fix that for them. Um, new gloves for my birthday. These are from the kids. These are uh, Firm Grip. I don't know where they I think they got them at Home Depot. Kind of remind me of a, a, like a baseball glove, but we're going to try them out because I'm dealing with water, and the other day I was wearing some different gloves that got soaked and didn't feel very good at all. So we're going to try these out. Uh, another big question that I got on my birthday was if I was going to get new boots. Um, I did not. I did not get new boots this year for my birthday. I think these boots that I'm wearing, um, these are Ariat boots. I think they are on year number three, actually, to tell you the truth. So um, I, I guess we're just going to keep on pushing through and see how long, how long they last. They're not in the best shape, but they're not in the worst shape either. To see what we're dealing with, we have to go over by the uh, chicken house, uh, which is where the water is for the calves, and we're going to peek in there, kind of look at the, the mess that we're dealing with. I did um, get it shut off this morning, um, so we didn't end up... Good morning! Yes! <laughs> Rooster. Uh, I did get it shut off this morning, but uh, they don't have any water right now, so we got to get it fixed. And... Uh, yeah, get it cleaned up a little bit because they kind of made a mess out of it too. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here are our calves. These guys recently weaned just on Monday. They're actually doing pretty good. Um, they've got some food to eat, clean up there and they've got another bale down there in that corral. that they're working on destroying. Speaking of destroying, uh, they did manage to last night destroy <laughs> their water tank. I'm not sure what the heck these guys did over here. But uh, we do have a water tank set up for them. There's a hydrant close by. And uh, apparently, who knows what happened over here, but it's just a, a mass of, of carnage and, and crap. There's their tank. And it looks like they have made a really big mess. Obviously spilling their tank, which then ran this way into their little corral. This is the hydrant that actually feeds out to that tank. They broke the hose off of it. And uh, yeah, it was just a mess. But now we get to fix it. All right, first things first, we've got to clean this tank up. So I've actually gotten a garden hose here. Borrowed one of Aaron's nozzles, don't tell her. And we're just gonna spray this tank out, get it all cleaned up. Okay, so here's the thing. You can go through and clean this tank out immaculately. You can scrub it down, you can disinfect it, do everything you can do to this tank, and I guarantee you, as soon as you set it up, a cow is gonna poop in it. So, really, I'm not too worried about getting it super duper clean, but I do wanna get a majority of the junk out of it so that these guys have some clean water. We also have chickens close by, so God knows what they're doing in the water. But now it's time to uh, go ahead and get this tank set back up and hopefully get it filling. This is what we call a bathtub tank. Because it looks like a bathtub. I'm sure it has a different name, but... All I know is they're fiberglass and they're heavy. So again, just like I did with the other one, I want to... Get this thing filled with water so it's got weight to it, so they can't push it around. Unfortunately, these cows are all in here, so they're gonna make a bit of a mess, but my hope is they don't just flip it back over and spill it all over the place. So I'm gonna let this tank fill up for a while. Let 
let these guys get a drink. Hey, get out of the tank. These calves have no, absolutely no respect. Um, and I'm running out of patience. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and get the float on this. So I'm just gonna attach it right onto the end of the hose that we were using there, since they broke the old one. Attaching a new float along with a new freeze miser to hopefully keep everything thawed and open. And turn it all back on. And away we go. That pretty much wraps it up. Uh, I think this whole thing's gonna work over here. Uh, and honestly, you're not gonna believe this, but it, it's kind of starting to rain just a little bit. But I do have a, an added surprise for you here. Hey, buddy. I don't know if anybody remembers this guy, but this is Cole. Hey, Cole, how are you? How are you? How you doing, buddy? Cole was our bottle calf this year, who has now been moved to the calves and is a big kid. Yeah, you're a big kid. <laughs> Cole came over to say hi while I was getting set up to wrap this up. So, hey buddy. Yeah. 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 Okay, we still got a couple days left in the week, so not the weekend yet. Yeah, I see you. <laughs> Alrighty guys, yeah, we do have a couple days left here. Um, not sure what the, the week has in store for us, but uh, we're going with the flow, okay? So, we will see you tomorrow. Well, you may not know it from this week, but uh, not only do we have cows on the ranch, this week's been pretty much all about cows, we also have a lot of other animals. We've got goats, we've got chickens, we've got pigs, and today is all about the pigs. And a few chickens, because the chickens and the pigs actually kind of live in harmony. Uh, that right back there is the pig feeder. That's uh, the, where we put all the food for the pigs. They eat it, they spill, the chickens come and clean it up. Kind of a, a, a work in progress, but uh, they do work together and the, the chickens come and clean up after the pigs. And, and really, if you have pigs, your chickens are not a bad thing to have. Chickens are, eat, are good to come and, and help out the pigs. The problem is, um, especially this week since we're talking about uh, things that happen and that we're not able to uh, actually anticipate. Uh, one of the things we can't anticipate is their food, all the animals' food, and I kind of screwed up this week and I, I didn't check the pig food. And now it is Friday and the pigs are, well, they're out of food. So I called and ordered more food, but unfortunately it's not gonna be ready until next week. So I have a couple different options. Um, one is that we go to town, we buy pig food in town, which is fine, we can do that, but we also have a lot of other options on the ranch and ways that we can feed the animals, and, and one of those happens to be the gardens. It's too dang dark in the barn. All right, so Aaron is in the process of cleaning off the gardens. Um, we're just coming into the, to the end of things. Um, we've got onions here, squash, 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 squash. <laughs> we've got a whole lot of cabbage back here and uh, all this will eventually end up in the farm store, but there's obviously stuff that doesn't end up in the farm store and, and a lot of scrap that ends up going into the animals. So 
Aaron usually keeps me some sort of scrap pile, and this is actually a great big old scrap wheelbarrow that we're going to be taking out to the pigs. Um, and hopefully I can make this last throughout the weekend so that they um, can last until Monday, at least until I get some food on the way. So uh, we are going to take this wheelbarrow, which is a giant wheelbarrow, and we're going to take it out to the pigs. We're going to get them fed. What a simple day. Here we go. I think it'll fit through a door, so we're going to have to go out ah, through the garage door. In this wheelbarrow, looks like we've got a lot of onions. I don't know if pigs like onions, but I imagine they do. And pumpkins, tomatoes, acorn squash, a little bit of everything. It's kind of like pre-seasoning your bacon. Ooh, they see me coming. Hungry, hungry piggies. <laughs> Once I realized I was out of food, I realized I had to feed them that, I started thinking about ways to actually do this. Um, one of my thoughts was to put it in the buck of the tractor, drive over, dump it over, which is fine. That would work. But I'm going to try a theory here, and that's that I'm going to open this gate. I think pigs are going to escape, but my hope is that they come back for food. That's about all I got going for me. So let's see if it works. Okay. Y'all stay in there. Okay, we've got pigs escaping. Piggies, oh dang it. Hey, pigs, come on pigs. Pig, 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 pig. Come on, pig, pig. Come on, pigs. Come back in here, pigs. Pig, 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 pig. Come on, pigs. Oh, I got pigs everywhere. <laughs> uh, I got pigs on the run. We gotta go gather pigs. You may notice it's raining again, a little bit. It's been kind of weird weather here this fall. We're almost into winter already, but oddly enough, I think we've had more rain than we've had snow. Hey pigs, no, 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 hey. This might've been a bad idea. Come on, pigs, hey. No, 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 go home. Go home, pigs, go home. Go home. Hey. Come on, pigs. Go home, pigs. Come on. Okay. I think we have everybody. Yeah, we've got 16, 16 pigs. Look at that. A bunch of nasty, gross stuff to eat. Pigs are, are fed. Uh, that should keep them going for a couple days at least. They're only up to about uh, about 10 pounds of food um, each, uh, five to 10 pounds of food each per day. So they should be okay, and uh, we can uh, 
we can move into tomorrow where hopefully <laughs> everything goes smooth. Well guys, we made it all the way to the end of the week. I'm just now, has that been on my hat all week long? Bunch, bunch of dirt. There we go. All right. Probably been on there since spray checking. Uh, we made it uh, to the end of the week. I hope you enjoyed this week on the ranch. Um, it's, uh, what time is it? About three o'clock, Saturday, November 20th. And uh, yeah, we, we, we made it to the end of the week and this far without anything, cause you know, catastrophic happening on the ranch. So I thought it'd be fun today to uh, go and take a look at some of the things that didn't cause us any problems. In fact, I have a couple chores I need to take care of anyway. So uh, we can uh, wander over. Let's get started uh, by taking a look at the goats. Well, while this week we did have trouble with the pigs and the cows, <laughs> a couple times with the cows, uh, the calves, of course, in their water situation, uh, the goats really didn't give us any trouble this week. And the great thing about it is you can watch the goats on our website, ourwarminglife.com. And you can watch the goats on our goat cam. I've actually uh, heard of people just watching them while they sit at work. They call it goat therapy. And you can just watch the goats do their thing. Um, you have a phone call, you know, with somebody, with a customer or a, a run-in with your boss or whatever it may be. Maybe the goats can be just enough to level you out as we walk by where the uh, calves are i'm glad that cole came and <laughs> showed himself actually i couldn't uh, figure it out I, I set down my gloves and one of the calves it wasn't on film but one of the calves took off with one of my gloves and i was like who what the heck and went and chased down my glove and it turned out to be cole speaking of pets this is jack over there we've got Fancy and uh, Cruella and Waffle hanging out inside the, the goat house. And then of course our newest goat, this is Yoda. Hi Yoda. Yoda is pregnant and due in March, hopefully with twins. So, hi. Hi Fancy. <laughs> hi. Hi kiddo. Jack is really interested in what we're doing too. Hey, Jackie. Don't eat me. Hey, stop trying to eat me. So, while uh, we did have our share of troubles this week, the goats, nice and easy to deal with. And I'll admit, there was a couple times this week that I went and watched the goat cam <laughs> myself. We got to duck inside the chicken house and grab some eggs. This is another place we did not have any problems, thankfully, because problems in the chicken house are rarely fun. They usually have to do with water and something leaking. That's a pretty good haul of eggs for one day. Now I did say that uh, everything's going smoothly and this is really kind of a minor thing, but uh, our chickens do need some more, um, we, we use shavings in their nests to keep the eggs clean. So I got to dump more shavings in, but really if that's the biggest problem I have today, I'll take it. And putting shavings in the nest does actually keep them cleaner, so. And it makes it so we have to wash less eggs, which is always a good thing. Yoda, in here hanging out with us. Hey kiddo. The eggs will stay in the chicken house for tonight until I fill up an entire uh, bucket. Once I do that, then I'll take them to the house, get them washed and put in the farm store. A little dirty. Another week is done. Murphy's Law holds true. In fact, I think Murphy might have been a rancher himself because, boy, he got that right. 
whenever whenever anything can go wrong it will go wrong and everywhere you turn there's going to be something to do i always say and my dad always said that if you're on a ranch and you're not doing anything it's because you don't want to do anything there's lots to be done now there's nothing to be wrong with not wanting to do something every once in a while but there's a lot that needs to be done and there's some stuff that has to be done animals have to have water animals have to have food and sometimes you have to keep them safe from themselves and keep them out of a hay field or anywhere they're not supposed to be guys thank you very much for hanging out with me on my birthday week i'm one year older and uh man i gotta tell you facebook i think i had over a thousand messages wishing me a happy birthday i wish i could reply to every single one of you guys but i can't so that being said thank you very much uh, for being here with us. I hope you can join us on Sunday for Beyond the Ranch, which happens on the Beyond the Ranch channel, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. And until then, have a great week. Be sure to subscribe and follow along on our Wyoming life. Thanks, guys.